What's up, students? Welcome back. Hope you're having the best day of your life. Today, a 2018 free response question by request. Because if you ever want me to do a problem, just leave it in the comments below. And if I have some time, I will get to it. This question right here is a seven point question. Suggested time is about 13 minutes. It deals with an oscillating block that's going to be moving back and forth and back and forth. And then at the instant it's at its equilibrium position where the spring is not stretched or compressed. We drop 2M on top of it, and then the period of that spring is going to change from the period T sub P to the period T sub PQ. And in the first question, they want us to determine a numerical value of this ratio. So what is the ratio of the old period to the new period? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the period of an oscillating spring formula, which is given by 2 pi m over k. So if I put this in terms that they want, I can initially say that the t sub p was equal to 2 pi m over k. So this was our initial condition. Our final was t p sub q, and that was given by 2 pi but now M is changed. It's going to be the sum, right? This is a total inelastic collision in a sense. So now we have 3M over K. Now the K remains the same because the spring did not change. So this is our final condition. So now when I want to take the ratio of this, I put T P Q divided by T P. And I have this 2 pi square root of 3M over k divided by 2 pi square root of m over k. Now doing some math, we know we can cancel this out. And when you have a rad on top and bottom, you can write this as one big rad with a compound fraction, 3m over k divided by m over k. And to simplify that further, we can bring this up to the top and say this is 3m over k times k over m all under the square root. This will cancel, this will cancel, and we see that the ratio given a numerical value is the square root of 3. Now, I think this one was a little tricky because they did ask for a number. And in fact, this is a number. And when kids were reading the question, they didn't really see any numbers besides this 2. So they're like, how the heck am I going to get a number? And that's essentially it. It's just the ratio of the masses. The figure is reproduced above. That's great. How does the amplitude now? So now they don't want to talk about period. Now we want to know the amplitude of the two-box system compare with the original amplitude initially, AP of just P alone in a clear coherent paragraph length. So this is a paragraph length. We can use diagrams, equations, and explain our reasoning. Okay, now I'm not gonna bore you with writing out an entire paragraph, but I'm gonna tell you definitely the points that you wanna hit upon. First, you wanna talk about what causes the amplitude of a spring. Well, the amplitude of a spring is really represented by the stretch or compress of that spring. And it's determined by two different things, either the potential energy of the spring, which is one half, K X squared. But now in a conserved situation right now, energy is conserved because there's going to be no outside forces given to the system. We can say that the potential energy is really determined by the kinetic energy at this point, because that's what's going to be converted into that stretch or compress in this potential energy. So that is one half M V squared. So we essentially see a two part system that's going to happen where when I drop this block on, something is probably going to happen to V, and this is going to change K, which is going to then change PE, which is then in turn going to change X. And that's what I want to describe inside a paragraph length response, and these are the equations I'm going to use. But also, I need to determine, where right, well, how are we going to relate the two velocities of the two systems? Well, remember, I just told you that this is essentially a total inelastic collision. And in an elastic collision where no outside forces, we know that the momentum of the system before has to equal the momentum of the system after. Now, momentum is just given by mv before and after. Now, we know before we have m and V naught. And we also know that after, now I have 3M V final. 
Well, these M's are going to cancel out, and we see that the final velocity, as opposed to the initial velocity, is really V0 over 3. It's one-third the velocity later. This is the speed after. So this is what relates to the amplitude P, Q, where just V0, which we know is bigger, is going to be, just V0 is going to be that amplitude P. So I can now say that after I add this block, the speed is going to go down. Therefore, the kinetic energy is going to go down. Therefore, the ability to convert to potential energy is going to go down. Therefore, stretch or compress is going to go down. Therefore, amplitude is going to go down. So we see that the amplitude of P, Q is going to be less than the amplitude of AP. So once again, just to summarize all that, we know that the amplitude is less because we have a conservation of momentum. So we found the final velocity after I add blocks is going to be one-third the initial. That's smaller. That one-third smaller speed is going to convert to less kinetic energy. That less kinetic energy at this equilibrium point means that I'm going to convert to less potential energy of the spring because energy is conserved. Therefore, we're going to have less stretch or compress, and that stretch or compress is dictated as the amplitude, which is the distance from x naught to some sort of x stretch. I hope that helps, guys. If you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments below. Like I said, if I have time, I'll get to them. Please give the video a thumbs up if this helped. Have a great day.